What name could contain such a glory? In the cool breezes of Eden, brought from the infant earth, one arose, the voice of his creator speaking his identity to life. Adam, man, and as heaven waited short with bread, the creator spoke yet another, Eve, mother of all the living. So it was with Abraham, named in the promise as the father of nations, Peter, the rock upon which the church would stand. The name called to life the destiny within. The name set the stage for all that was to come. And unto us a child was born. And what name could contain his glory? For he was mighty God, as the universe gasped into being, flinging rays of light from his presence to pierce the void to shatter the shadows to a tapestry of color. And he is mighty God, shattering our darkness, revealing our light, our truth in him. He was everlasting father when orphaned Israel needed a father's touch. When we, with grief-stricken cheeks, need the embrace of one who never leaves, when we have lost our way to dark horizons, it is our everlasting Father who lights the way home. He is Prince of Peace. When, like Elijah, we need the still small voice in the turmoil's midst. When, like David, we need the melodies of his presence to soothe our troubled minds. He is sanctuary within our trials, shepherd guiding us to still waters. And yes, he is wonderful counselor. God who gives counsel in the chaos, crafting disorder into calm and failure into beauty. He is a voice for the voiceless. He is dignity for the stateless soul. It is he who raised up a lowly shepherd to become a king. He who took the fishermen of Galilee and made them leaders of history. It is the counselor who redeems our lost years breaking chains that have kept dreams imprisoned and joy confined. The name reaches across eternity, exclaimed by the splendors of galaxies, sung by the passions of angels, roared in heaven's fervor, exalted in creation's unfettered rejoicing. What name could contain him? What title? What soul? Renown? For this is our wonderful counselor. This is our mighty God. This is our everlasting Father, our Prince of Peace. What name could contain Emmanuel, God with us, Yahweh, the great I Am. What name could contain the Word of Life, the Light of the World, the King of Kings, the Lord of All. We bow to the name that holds every other in its matchless worth. What name could contain such a glory? What name but Jesus? We cry Jesus. We cry holy is the name. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. Tunes 
righteousness and wonders of His love and wonders of His love and wonders, wonders of. So my name's Mark. I'm on the ministry team here. It's a massive pleasure to welcome you here. And also those joining online, great. To, well, I can't see you, but it's great you can see me. Um, and I hope you have a nice time too. We're going to have uh, a number of carols, a number of readings. And when we do have carols, uh, do feel free to, to stand if you're able to, to join in the, the celebration of what we're really about tonight, which is to worship Jesus. You know, sometimes I like to say, when we, don't come, to, when we come to church, we don't come to have a meeting about God, but a meeting with God. And I don't know if that's your expectation this evening, but I'd really like to encourage you that as we come together, that God might have something to say, not just for the person next to you or for everyone else, but for you, that God is speaking to you. So we're going to have an amazing time. I'm just going to pray, and uh, then we're going to have our first couple of readings. So Lord, we thank you for this evening, such an amazing opportunity to celebrate your goodness and your love for us as we prepare for Christmas. What a, what a treat it is to come together this evening to sing familiar carols, but to enjoy uh, worshipping you together. And so Lord, would you pour out your spirit upon us this evening, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Do please be seated, and uh, we're going to have our first two readings. Uh, Polly and Josh are going to read to us. Thank you. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. In the sixth month of Mary of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel down to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary, the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at this and wondered what his words were, wondered what kind of greeting this would be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and, his, and, he will, be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. The kingdom will never end. 
How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am still a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in, in her old age. She who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, may your word be to me fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight so God is with us, even now, 
His love is here. His love is here. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, you are the God who saves us. Worthy of all our praises, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus.
because you're the kindest person that there's ever been. There's no one like you, Jesus. So consistent, so loving, so faithful. Lord, your word is true. You're rich in mercy, steadfast. You lavish us with affection and care. You're with us when it's amazing. You're with us when it's desperately hard. In every season, you are present with us. And so, Lord, we adore you because you're worthy of praise. And we adore you because our experience tells you, tells us that you are good, that you're worth adoring. And Lord, as we continue to to worship you, to hear your word, would you stir in our hearts that awareness that, that you are for me, that you see me, that you love me. And Lord, would you stir also that grace to respond in praise and worship of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, do please be seated. I thought just now I had a thankless task. We were literally just like taking off and I had to get up to say, sit down. So it was amazing. It's really, really amazing. Um, One of the things we love to do, this is a real treat, um, this Contemporary Carols each year. And uh, one of the things we like to do as part of this service is to have kind of a a testimony, someone coming and sharing about what God has been up to. Because again, we're adoring this amazing God who's not a figment of our imagination, but a God who is real and who impacts upon our lives in amazing, transformative ways. And it's going to invite Becky and Dean, who are going to come and share with us uh, a testimony of what God is all about in our lives. Hi everyone, I'm Becky and I'm going to ask Dean some questions. I met Dean um, soon after we opened up again after lockdown. He started coming then and I just uh, asked him if he'd mind telling us a bit of his journey since then. So Dean, can you tell us a bit of your story and how God's been working in your life since the first lockdown? Yeah, sure. Um, Prior to, um, like, pre-pandemic, life was pretty much smooth sailing. Um, everything was going according to plan. And, yeah, pretty much had no worries. And then about two months into the uh, lockdown, I started to experience some mysterious kind of um, symptoms, which we thought was related to the, to the virus, but turned out to be something else. Um, anyway, my health just rapidly declined. I um, yeah, was in a lot of suffering. And, yeah, my, my world just felt like it um, had been turned upside down. Okay, so how did you cope during those months? Um, I didn't cope very well, to be honest. Um, physically, I was, I was in pretty bad shape. Um, like, I had gone from fighting fit to, like, not being able to get out of bed. Um, I, I wasn't able to get much uh, medical advice or help due to the circumstances, um, which made it quite difficult mentally as well because I was kind of in this state of limbo. Uh, I didn't know what was happening, and I, I didn't really have a clue of what to do. Um, but then you were diagnosed? Yeah, so um, about 16 months later, um, uh, the doctors uh, finally came up with a diagnosis. Uh, it, was, it was pretty grim, actually. It was, um, I was given a diagnosis of having a very, very rare incurable uh, auto, autoimmune disease. Um, and the prognosis was, was pretty bleak as well. They said I'd, I'd have to be on really strong drugs for the rest of my life. I'd have to uh, have multiple surgeries. Um, and that would just kind of um, control the symptoms, but I would, I would have this disease uh, for the rest of my life. So that sounds pretty grim. Not a nice yeah. place to be. Um, what happened then? So um, a few unexplainable things happened, um, uh, which kind of led me back to church. And I suppose that's when you kind of saw my, myself and my family kind of uh, uh, becoming involved. Um, and I found myself uh, growing closer to God. So I was praying more. Uh, reading the Bible, um, coming to evening service and, and worshiping more in a spiritual way. Uh, I was kind of seeking after God's guidance um, on a daily basis. And I guess now looking back, whereas before my efforts were more in the physical kind of realm, 
this was a way to kind of make some kind of waves in the spiritual world. And um, that's pretty much when things started to really get better for me. Um, it's a bit hard to explain, but I, I, I started to find ways in which I could um, uh, control and even counteract the disease. Uh, and yeah, I just kind of implemented a protocol and slowly but surely I started to regain, regain my health. So I think what you're saying and you're telling us is that you believe that by connecting with God again, he led you to ways to cope and even to overcome your disease. Yeah, I, I mean, looking back retrospective, that's, that's exactly um, what happened. Um, I, I guess it was all part of his plan. He kind of wanted to bring me back into relationship with him and um, the journey that I went on with the disease was kind of like the vehicle for it. Um, a scripture that really helped me kind of understand this was um, Proverbs 3 verse 6, which says, in all your ways... Um, acknowledge the Lord and he shall make your path straight. So basically, uh, once I drew close to him and he drew close to me, he kind of like uh, unveiled this roadmap for me to follow and everything just started falling into place. Um, I should just fast forward to today because a lot has happened and it would take ages for me to explain everything. But um, I'm, 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 I'm in a much better place physically. I don't have to rely on any um, strong drugs. Um, the consultants and the specialists don't really understand what's happened to me, but... Um, I don't have any symptoms, um, I feel great uh, spiritually and physically and the disease itself is like pretty much like in 90% remission so things have, things have really gone well. So that is an amazing, <laughs> yeah, things yeah. have gone pretty well. Yeah, so, yeah. Pretty well. <laughs> yeah. so you have been um, through that time on quite a journey, quite a dip to start with but then reconnected with God, he's led you through, um, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, the journey itself is, is quite remarkable. Um, and I guess when I, again, look, looking back retrospectively, the, the journey uh, served as a, a vehicle for change, really, because I was kind of coasting along in life and not really... Um, I believed in God, but, you know, I was living a bit of a mediocre life. So uh, through, through the, um, um, like, the... Through the adversity, that's a good word that I had written here, is, um, it helped me to gain, uh, like, a peace within myself, um, uh, kind of like what Paul talks about in Philippians 4, where he explains about the peace of God that transcends all understanding. Um, verse 13 is when he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, which is like a famous line. But before that, he talks about his ups and downs and all the struggles and uh, trials and tribulations that he had to go through to get there. So, you know, at the time, it was a real struggle. Like, you know, as I said, at times I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't walk my dogs. I couldn't play with my son. But, you know, looking back, it was a real blessing because he made all the provisions that were necessary and through it all, it's like um, he's brought me and my family much, much closer to God. Yeah. So he's brought you closer. And I know you have a couple more scriptures you wanted to share with us because you're so impacted by what God's done in your life. Yeah, I, I, mean, since, I mean, since these experiences have taken place, God's really called me to, uh, to study his word, to fellowship, to be involved with other Christians um, and to, to be part of church. So um, a few scriptures here that kind of helped me understand what I was going through and kind of build my faith. Uh, James chapter 4, verse 8 says, draw near to me, sorry, draw near to God and he will draw near to, to you. Uh, the first chapter of James, verse 3, also says, the testing of your faith produces perseverance, which I could definitely uh, testify to. And Jeremiah 29, verses 12 to 14, um, it's another scripture that really helped. It's, it's a bit of a heavy one, so I'll just kind of summarize it. Um, God's people kind of... Um, were kind of, um, they, they drifted away and God actually allowed them to be taken into captivity. Um, I'm sure you know the story, um, but through their kind of suffering, then they kind of, you know, called out to God, cried out. He heard their prayers um, and then brought them back, reestablished them, and then they, they were close again. So that kind of pretty much sums up the, the journey that I'd, that I'd been on and, and where I am today. Yeah, so when you read that, you're like, hey, that's like me. That was, that was definitely me. <laughs> that was definitely me. Well, Dean, we really appreciate you sharing your story for your wife here and your son and that uh, you've become part of our church family here. It's great to have you. And just amazing to hear what God's done in your life. And so we know as we celebrate Christmas, the gift of Jesus, that Christmas is going to mean a lot more to you because yeah. of what you've been through and now your closer relationship with the Lord. Yeah, definitely. I mean, everything's changed, to be honest, every facet. And um, I really appreciate uh, every small thing now from uh, what I've experienced and I'm extremely thankful uh, uh, for all the provisions that God has made for, for myself and for my family. Yeah, so I just love to pray for Dean. He's been very brave to get up and share his story in front of us. So let's just pray for him. So Lord, we thank you for Dean. We thank you for how you've been calling him to yourself. Thank you, Lord, that we know you didn't cause his illness, but in it, you, you led him to you. And Lord, you've helped him to overcome, to find strategies and ways 
Lord, we pray for your continued healing for him, your continued blessing on him and his family, that he would know that continued provision, spiritually, physically, um, uh, materially, in every way, Lord. So we pray your protection and your love and blessing for him this Christmas season and always. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Dean.
Just the voice to sing silent. Please be seated. Dean um, shared in his testimony how powerfully the Bible can speak to us and mentioned various verses from the Bible that have spoken to him. And that's why we have readings from the Bible when we come together at church, because we believe it's God's word that can speak powerfully to each one of us. So we're going to have another couple of Bible readings. And so Terence and Allah are going to read to us and then Paul is going to come and share a message. Okay. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. This is the word of the Lord. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light was the light was The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was not made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which has his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all he did receive him, to those who believed in his name, He gave the right to become children of God. Children born not from natural descent, nor for human decisions or husband's will, but from God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. 
He have seen his glory, we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the God. Well, we're going to um, just think about those Christmas messages for a few minutes. Now, before we do that, let's pray. The Lord, we want to thank you that today we can worship you as Emmanuel, the God who is with us. And so we ask you to be with us in these next few minutes as we think together about the meaning of Christmas and about what it might mean for our lives. We ask you to fill this place with your presence so that we would know that you are with us, that you're here. We ask you to speak to us. And I pray, Lord, that every heart would prepare you a home, just as we sang earlier. That this wouldn't just be something that passes us by, but it's be something that we can take in and receive and be changed by. I want to ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I love being um, in Christmas services. Um, There's a lot going on in our world at the moment. Um, Apparently, football is not coming home, which is a bit sad, isn't it? Um, It does mean that we can all be here for contemporary carols on Wednesday night, whereas otherwise we might have had a really tricky decision about where we were going to be that night. But um, I was just thinking... um, you know, it's, it's the same every four years, basically, isn't it? So, you know, we go in with very low expectations, we exceed our expectations, then people start to get a bit excited, and then it's just crushing disappointment all over again. And the funny thing is, in four years' time, we'll do exactly the same again, won't we? It's like we never learn. And I, I want to talk tonight about Christmas so that your experience of Christmas isn't basically the same thing, but on a one-year cycle rather than a four-year cycle. Because it seems to me that for a lot of people, Christmas is a little bit like that. You know, we we kind of, in November, it's like we see Christmas coming and it's like, oh, Christmas is coming. And and then as we get a little bit closer, we start putting up the decorations, we start receiving the cards, we start, you know, hearing the songs, maybe come to a carol service or two. And then, you know, it kind of like, the expectation comes and... Well, maybe not crushing disappointment, but basically, you know, we, we go through the Christmas itself and it's like nothing's really changed and it, it promises so much and seems to deliver so little. So I want to talk tonight so that your Christmas and my Christmas might be different from that. Maybe that we can really engage with what Christmas is, is actually all about. Maybe we can receive something at Christmas which would make a difference for us each and every day from now on. Now, the first thing to say is I hope you will have a great Christmas. Okay, I mean, we are in need of a lot of Christmas comfort and cheer. Uh, we've been through a couple of hard years. Um, there's enough going on in most people's life that you know, a little bit of comfort and cheer wouldn't go amiss. So I hope you have a fantastic time, lots of celebrations, lots of lovely things, lots of nice time with family and friends. And I've certainly preached a lot of messages over the years that kind of go along those lines about how this season will be one in which God will meet you in a way which will just do something great. It will, just, it will lift your life. It will give you light in your darkness and give you comfort in your troubles and give you hope in the face of you know, the future. And those things are really important because we do need to be able to get through this life. And the point of Jesus' coming is that each and every day will be different. You know, Jesus came so that your, and my, your life, my life, would actually be better day by day. Um, if you know somebody who's a genuine Christian, who's, who's got a living relationship with Jesus, you'll know that for all the ups and downs of life, they don't face it alone. That they've got someone who with, who's with them and supports them. And um, when they come to hard times, there seems to be resources in their lives that, that perhaps if you're not yet in the faith, if you're not yet somebody who believes, maybe you look on that and you're a bit... Envious. I know certainly I've had people over the years say things like, well, I wish I had your faith. It's like, well, you can. You know, I'm not anything special. You know, it wasn't like I was struck by lightning one day. It's just I, I looked into it and I decided that actually this is real. This has got substance. And I received it. And then I discovered gloriously that, that in receiving on it, it kind of it started to change everything. As you heard from Dean. You know that God is real and he's at work in our lives and he hears and he answers prayers and he does things in circumstances. So I know that God is a God who does make every single day and every single place different. 
But this year I've been really struck by how much bigger the Christmas message is than that. I was speaking last week about how, you know, in a world torn apart by suffering and war, God talks about coming in with a baby to begin a reign of justice and peace. And he says that through this child who is born, who will grow up to be a king, that all the evil powers of the world will be dethroned. And one day there will be justice, there will be righteousness, there will be peace on the earth. And I've been hearing people say kind of interesting things. I think possibly because of the, you know, the cost of living crisis. I've heard a couple of people say things like, you know, we're going to have a smaller Christmas this year. And I was encouraging people, have, have a bigger Christmas. But then I also heard people say things like, well, you know, really, it's just for the children. You know, if it was just us, we wouldn't really bother. But, you know, it's just, it's just for the children. And um, the truth is that there is a certain magic about Christmas for children of all ages. Um, I certainly love lots of the things about Christmas that you know, the children can relate to really easily. But there's so much more. The, the love and the joy and the comfort and the peace that Christmas speaks about, all of that, it is all of that because we're in need of it. It's all of that in the face of some of the difficulties that we face, some of the challenges of real life. Christmas is a very real message I know sometimes when we read it, because we're so familiar, it's like it's come out of a fairy tale book. And we've encrusted it with all sorts of, you know, bits of extra fluff that wasn't really there. It's, it's a real story about real people in a real place, in the real history that you and I are still part of. And actually, as you dig into it, as you read the Christmas gospel, not just the little passage, the, the sweet bit where the baby is born, but you read the passages around it, there are some very adult themes in this amazing story. This is a story of shame and stigma. It's, it's about politics and poverty. It's about, it's about war and displaced people. Uh, it's about power and bloodshed. Christmas really isn't for children. Christmas is for people who know they need a saviour. They're old enough to know that sometimes we make a complete mess of our lives and we need somebody to come along and, and clean us up and help us start over again. For anybody that's ever looked at their life and despaired, Christmas says there is one who can help you start all over again. Christmas is, is not for children who, by and large, live in a more cocooned kind of world. You know, we try and shelter our children from some of the worst realities of what life is like. Christmas is for people who look at the world in despair. Because they look at the world and they see so much that's wrong and they see the evils of, of war and poverty and famine and racism and the way the world structure rewards those who have and continues to take from those who haven't. And if anybody's ever looked at that world and despaired, Christmas is for you. Christmas is a big message and, and it's even bigger than all of that as well. It's not just about our lives and this world. It's actually even more than that as well. And I wanted to show you the, um, the advert that the Church of England filmed. Um, it's really good. I shouldn't be surprised when I said that, but I was kind of. Um, <laughs> but that's just really good. It makes you think. So we're going to watch this advert for a couple of minutes.
we've got a few issues about that, that um, clearly no clergy in real life are actually that photogenic. Um, <laughs> But you know they got you know got ringers in to do all of that sort of thing. It's, it's a really powerful message, isn't it? About how God is with you and faith is relevant at every stage of life, um, and about how the church is a place that can embrace you and support you because the presence of God amongst His people will will give you that support that you need. What perhaps that film maybe misses slightly is that it's not just for this life, and that's the thing that really struck me. You know, it isn't just this life that the gospel speaks to, the good news of Jesus at Christmas. It's, it's about comfort now, but it's about more than that. It's about loss and life beyond this life. That's what Christmas really speaks into. And that's all because Jesus came from heaven to earth. It's because he stepped out of eternity and came into history. It's just a mind-blowing concept. The only person that you could ever ask, where are you really from, without being insulting, is Jesus. Okay, let's just get that straight. Literally, he is the only person you can ever ask that, because he is 100% from here, and he's 100% from somewhere else. It's because, you know, clearly, there was something about Jesus. They knew he was absolutely, fully, completely human, but they also knew there was something else about him, and the, the only way that they could understand it was eventually to recognize that this was God himself invading our earth. So football may not be coming home, but Jesus is. You know, Jesus is coming home. The Christmas message is about God coming to his own, coming to what he made. It's about him coming to us so that we in time could go to him. And it's a really, really powerful thought that. For us to be able to be able to know that we in this life are going home back to the God who made us, back to the home that we were destined for, the one without which we always feel uncertain and a little bit you know, odd, odd with life. You know, we don't really know where we fit. We don't really belong because we were made for something much more. Now, we've heard twice today already from Luke's gospel. And um, Luke... It feels like an episode of the TV show, you know, Who Do You Think You Are? Because Luke is obsessed with all these genealogies. He's kind of trying to tell us where Jesus has come from. And he keeps on talking about how Jesus has this amazing ancestry, this heritage uh, as a descendant of King David. And yet he's more. That's Luke's point. That yes, this is the, the Messiah. This is the king that was promised. This is the, the descendant of David that's been longed for for centuries. And yet he's more. He is also Messiah, Emmanuel, God with us. And he tells a story of how he came to us and there was no guest room for him. There was no room for him at the inn, as we used to say. And then John, which Allah read for us, John tells the, the same story, but he tells it from heaven's perspective instead of how Jesus was very God. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing that was made that was made. Everything comes in through him and it's for him and he sustains all things. He's God and yet he becomes one of us. He becomes man. He takes on flesh and he lives among us. And then John tells the same story. He came to us and we didn't recognize him. He came to us and we didn't receive him and you think well why wouldn't we I mean surely if if God were turning up we would kind of like want to receive him but the truth is that our hearts we don't actually want God to come back in and take his own back one of the theologians put it this way God became man so that we proud and unhappy gods might become true men and women And that's the reason why we struggle to recognize him and receive him. Because we want to be gods in our own life. We want to be at the center. We want to be in charge. We want to call the shots. It's hard for us to to bow the knee. It's hard for us to yield our life, even to the one who made us. Even to the one who loves us. It's hard. And that's why so often we'd rather not recognize him. We'd rather not receive him because we're quite happy the way we are, except we're not. We say we're quite happy the way we are because we fear change, but actually we're not happy and we know we need something more. And that's why Christmas is so powerful. 
If you receive him, if you let him come and take control again, he's not going to override your personality. He's not going to lead you into things that aren't right for you. He's not going to lead you into things that you don't want. He's not going to ask anything of you that's, that's somehow ultimately bad for you. No, no, no. If, if you let him guide and direct the course of your life, it will be the life that you were created to live. It will be the best life you could ever possibly have, directed and guided by one who loves you better than you could ever hope to be loved. It will be light and life, and that life will continue beyond this life into the next. Because if he comes from eternity to history so that we can go back with him, we can step from history into eternity with him. I was sitting at the bedside of a friend in a hospice yesterday. And I, just sitting there and praying with him, the sense of God in that room was really strong because there was faith. There was faith there in that room and God was there. And I thought, you know, secular Christmas has nothing to offer in this situation. In fact, secular Christmas just makes this worse because it reminds you of loss and it reminds you of a world that's broken. Real Christmas has everything to say. Real Christmas says he came from heaven to earth so that we, when we pass from this earth, might go to him in heaven. He stepped out of eternity into history so that when our time is done in history, these few short years, we can live eternally with him. That's what Christmas is all about. It's so much bigger than all the lovely things which we do celebrate and they're right and we should. But it's so much more than that. It's world changing and ultimately for us, it's destiny changing. It has eternal consequences. It can hold you through the the greatest and strongest challenges that you'll ever face. There's um, many of you will know C.S. Lewis, the Narnia books. And in that, he describes a world under the rule of the white witch. Basically, it's the world without God. And he says in Narnia, under the rule of the white witch, it's always winter, never Christmas. And the point is, because of Christmas, then it's always that he is with us. And it's never ending. He's going to be with us forever. We're going to sing in a few moments. There's never been a love so great. He died so we could live. And I was just reflecting on the carols that we sing. And I I wonder how often we listen to the words and really think about what it is that we're singing. You know, once in Royal David City. He came down to earth from heaven, who is God and Lord of all. And his shelter was a stable and his cradle was a stall. With the poor and the mean and the lowly lived on earth our saviour holy and our eyes at last shall see him through his own redeeming love for that child so dear and gentle is our lord in heaven above and he leads his children on to the place where he has gone or heart the herald angels which we'll sing just a little bit later in this service mild he lays his glory by Born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth. Born to give them second birth. Even the children getting on the act. Um, Away in the manger, probably the favourite children's carol of all time. Even for grown-up children as well, I know that. Just think about this when you sing it. You're probably going to sing it in the next couple of weeks. But think about what it really means, what it's really saying. Be near me, Lord Jesus. I ask you to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. That's what Christmas is about. It's not something that will be overcome the 26th. It's not something that will be overcome January. It's not something that will leave you in dread of the bills come you know, February. It's actually about a life-changing, eternity-changing, history-changing intervention of God into our world, into your world. Something that makes us bold and confident in the face of whatever might come and whatever might come. If you're old enough to know that this life doesn't last forever, 
Christmas says, if you bow the knee to Jesus, then it can. If you're old enough to know that in this life we take losses, Christmas tells us that with Jesus, they can be made good. And I'd love you to receive that message this Christmas. I'd love you to know that you have unpacked that greatest gift that God has ever given. That you would be confident that this is a message, not just that can bring a little bit of sparkle into our lives in a slightly dark and cold part of the year, but something that can stand you in good stead to face all of your days with an even brighter hope at the end of them. And can I ask you to stand? The band are going to come back. But as they're coming back, we're going to have just a short time of prayer and wait upon God. You know, it's not always easy for us to make the connection between these things because they're so familiar that we almost become inoculated against them. You know, you know how you do inoculations? You give people a small dose of the real thing so that they can build up a resistance to it. Well, sometimes church is a little bit like that. You know, if your experience of church is not very often, you know, and, and you, know, you get a little dose when you come, sometimes it can kind of, you can kind of cope with it and you can sort of resist it. But sometimes God breaks through. There are moments where you hear him knocking. He, he actually speaks directly to your circumstances or he speaks into the moment that you're in at this time. And you sense that he's, he's actually might be there. He's real. And he wants to come in and help you. If that's something you'd like to do, I'm going to say a prayer in a moment. And then we've got a little book called Make the Connection. And um, on the doors... Uh, as you go out tonight, there'll be an opportunity to collect one of those if you'd like to read more. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the amazing truth of Christmas. That you came down from heaven to earth so that we, when our time comes to leave this earth, might be heaven bound. Thank you, Lord, that you came to save us from all the worst things that life could ever give. We know there is nothing that you have not defeated. Even the evil in the world, you have triumphed it over it by your cross. Our sense of being alone and disconnected, you have restored us back into relationship with the Father. Even death itself, defeated because you came the eternal God who became flesh so that flesh might live in turn with God. I pray, Lord, that as you knock on the hearts of those who are here who don't yet know you, I pray that you would grant them faith to open, to receive, to welcome you into their lives. All you need to do is just pray a simple prayer. Lord, I can't help myself but I believe that you could help me. Would you come in and would you establish your control in my life? I pray, Lord, that wherever that heart is crying out for you, I pray that by your Holy Spirit, you would now come and live and pour out your light and your life and your love, not just now, but evermore. Thank you, Jesus. You are faithful to your promises. You are still doing what you came to do. And so we worship you. Amen. Sins I want
is Jesus. His name is wonderful counselor. Oh my
Lord, as we proclaim your glory, as we acknowledge together this evening that you are for us, not against us, that the real message of Christmas is what you have done for us and what you've enabled for us. We worship you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you please be seated for another couple of minutes? I joked about the last time going, going up, and then I mean, this time I had to come up after Oh Holy Night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great, I get to come up now. Um, okay, it's all downhill after Oh Holy Night, isn't it? Um, no, not really. There's loads of great things to come. In fact, in fact, in fact, on that note, on that note, uh, Paul mentioned that as football isn't coming home, sorry to rub it in, uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't be here again on Wednesday to have an equally fantastic time uh, with our Carols by Candlelight service. So there are lots of these around the place. Uh, you might have noticed them already, uh, but do pick some up, give them to friends, family, uh, neighbours. So again, the next service is on Wednesday, but it also talks about about uh, the Everlasting Light, um, which is going to be amazing on the 23rd and the 24th, as well as a Midnight Communion and a Christmas Day Communion. So everything you need is on there. So I'm not going to say it all and then you forget. Just get one of those cards. There's plenty of them. And also, um, just like to say as well that we've got these cards at the back. We call Connect Cards. And if you're visiting this evening, you've never been before, it'd just be really great to connect with you, hence Connect Card. And uh, if you'd like to fill one of those out, hand it into Paul, Becky, or myself, or even the person that welcomed you uh, when you arrived. And it just means we can fill you in on what's going on around here and you can be part of all the fun. Come and join us. It'd be great to see you got uh, plenty of bits of paper here. There's a couple of other things I need to remember to say. And one of them is, this is Martin's last service, isn't it? Most, most people, I know, I know, ah, oh, exactly. So, um, Martin and Harriet and family were prayed for this morning, and I know some of you might not know Martin if you're visiting, uh, but we love Martin, and so I think it's only, I was going to get us to sing happy birthdays. Uh, um, should, we, should we clap? Should we do that? Speech, Martin, have you got speech? No, I'm fine, 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 okay. Okay, and uh, also we do, um, Paul mentioned a little book that you could pick up that tells you a bit more about the Christian faith. There's also a course we run regularly here called the Alpha Course, which is an amazing opportunity to gather with other people and to hear about the real Christmas, to hear about the true message of Christianity, what Jesus has done for us. And normally when we do it, you get some nice food thrown in for free, which is wonderful. And uh, if you'd like to know more, check out the website. We're going to be running the course in starting in January on Thursday evening, so the 19th, so you've got plenty of time to think about it, uh, the 19th will be the first one, and if you'd like to sign up for that, then do sign up via the Alpha page on the All Saints website, so it'd be great to see you if you'd like to be involved in that. And then finally, just an encouragement, I've been out there, and outside there's mull wine, and some really nice looking sort of spicy hot apple drink as well, which sounds really nice, and mince pies. So do please stick around. So I said, it wasn't all downhill after a holy night, was it? See, because you're going to get more wine now. So after the service, please uh, stick around for more wine. So if you'd like to stand, we're going to sing our final carol together, which will also be an offertory uh, that we can give as part of our worship of this amazing God. And uh, then after that, there'll be a final prayer of blessing before we have those refreshments.
Light and life to all He brings. Reason with healing in His wings. Mild He lays His glory by. Born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth. Born to give Him second birth. Well, if you weren't already feeling Christmassy, I'm reliably informed that it's snowing now. So, so it is truly Christmas. And uh, so just let you know about that. Walk safely, drive safely uh, via a mince pie. Uh, and uh, so a final prayer of blessing. Lord, we thank you for this time that we've had together. We thank you for the real message of Christmas that is life, that is good news. Lord, we thank you for your great love for us. And Lord, as we go from this place, we ask that we would go with your blessing. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us and those that we love this night and always. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone.